I am talking Welcome to Sky Valley by Caius. Oh, fuck yeah, man. It's so freaking good. So freaking good. And not everybody gets it. I understand. It's it's a club, man. And everyone's welcome, but not everyone stays in the club after, after their lit first listen to this album. Because, again, it's not for everyone, but it is for me, absolutely. Caius, welcome to Sky Valley. This is the first album I ever listened to by Caius. The year was 1994, and I was working at MTV Networks in New York City. Back in the days of CDs, the record labels would send over free promotional copies of their artists for the important people at MTV and VH1 to check them out. Uh, I was not one of those important people, by the way. Uh, They would discard the CDs they didn't want outside of their offices in a pile on the floor. Then in turn, the CD vultures would circle in and scoop them up. At the time, I was one of these vultures. We were a bottom-dwelling, low men on the totem pole. I don't know if you can still say that with the the Indian reference, but uh, whatever. Uh, We were a low men on the totem pole group that consisted of production assistants, videotape librarians, that would be me, and mailroom workers. The CDs came home to my 350-square-foot apartment, and I would crack open a beer and check them out. Sometimes maybe smoke a little something, too. Uh... I would take the CDs I didn't want down to the used record stores on St. Mark's Place, places like Sounds, Kim's, all those places. There's a bunch of them all in St. Mark's, which is in the East Village of Manhattan. Anyways, I'd take all these these promotional CDs that I scooped up at work and, and, and take them down there, and I'd sell them to these stores. And depending on my loot, I could make anywhere from ten to thirty dollars, which in nineteen ninety four for Mark Striegel was a was not bad. Anyway, Welcome to Sky Valley by Caius didn't go over so well at MTV Networks in nineteen ninety four, which meant I ended up with about seven or eight copies of this album that I picked up off the floor throughout the hallways of fifteen fifteen Broadway, the Viacom building in the middle of Times Square where MTV was headquartered. I kept one for myself and then tried to sell the rest of them down on St. Mark's Place along with other albums that I had acquired. I can't remember if the stores bought the Caius albums from me. It's quite possible they didn't because every industry CD vulture like myself was also trying to sell Welcome to Sky Valley for a little extra spending money. CDs that I couldn't sell would go in the trash can located on the corner of 3rd Avenue and St. Mark's Place. Did I throw away a bunch of copies of this incredible album? Honestly, I think I did. It's quite possible. After a few weeks, the one copy I did keep of Welcome to Sky Valley ended up in my CD player. My first reaction was that it was radically different from everything and anything I was listening to at the time. This was nowhere close to grunge or any of the other popular loud rock music in 1994. Was this a 1970s throwback to something that never really existed in the 70s? After my first listen, I was completely baffled. So I decided to listen again, and then again, and then again. Finally, Welcome to Sky Valley by Caius clicked, and I loved every second of it. Even when I was listening to this album on a low volume, you could feel the deafening power. It's tough to compare the sound that Caius gave us to anything that came before. Sure, there was other doomy, sludgy sounds that preceded them from bands like Trouble, Cathedral, or even Ozzy-era Black Sabbath, but none of that was really very close to what Caius was doing. Throughout the album, with incredible songs like Space Cadet, Supa Scoopa and the Mighty Scoop, and the haunting instrumental Asteroid, we are taken on a stoned and dangerous, out-of-control, off-road, desert dune buggy joyride. The addition of bassist Scott Reeder, who is distinctively different from former bass player Nick Oliveri, really took this album to a new place for the band that felt more free and unrestrained than their previous releases. The album also featured John Garcia on vocals, Brant Bjork on drums, and primary songwriter Josh Homme on guitar and backing vocals. Co-producer Chris Goss's influence on Welcome to Sky Valley is also a vital piece of the pie. Chris, of course, played with Masters of Reality. My favorite song on the album is Demon Cleaner, which musically seemed to be a glimpse of Josh's future. Four years later, 
with his massively successful band, Queens of the Stone Age. Caius is far more popular now than when they actually were an actual band. After Josh hit stardom with Queens of the Stone Age, people went back and discovered this masterpiece, and it is now viewed by many as a classic. I still listen to it frequently, and it never gets old or feels old. It is, to my ears, awesome. Guys, check it out. Welcome to Sky Valley by Caius. I don't know if you call Caius doom metal. I know Sam Dunn. He, he grouped them in the doom metal category when he did his big chart categorizing all these bands. But, you know, there isn't a lot of similarity between a band like, you know, Candlemass and Caius, and they're both under the doom metal category, according to Sam Dunn. But whatever, whatever it is, I love it. 